Susie here. Thank you for joining me for episode 173 of the Her Business Podcast. Today, I have a special guest. Now, I have another podcast called Content Sells, which I co-present with the amazing marketing expert, Michelle Falzon. It's a really popular podcast where we do have amazing guests, and we also do a lot of teaching of powerful and practical content marketing lessons for women business owners. So you definitely want to check it out. It's called Content Sells. Now, on that podcast, we recently interviewed the author of a brand new book called Risk Forward, Embrace the Unknown and Unlock Your Hidden Genius. The author is Victoria Labam, and she's someone I've had the opportunity to meet and interview before, and she is truly amazing. She was part of our Business Growth Summit for Female Entrepreneurs. She's been a guest on Content Cells two times now, and I'm so excited to perhaps be introducing you to her for the very first time. What she does is she helps people express their hidden genius and perform at their highest levels at work, on stage, on camera, and in their lives. And she's got a really interesting combination of performing arts, speaking and presentation skills, as well as business skills that makes for a really unique and powerful view of the world. She's a member of the Speakers Hall of Fame. She's known for her keynote presentations and workshops around the world. And she works with really big brands. Over 700 businesses have had the pleasure of having her work with them. And it includes brands like Starbucks and Microsoft, Intel, Verizon, Coca-Cola, Cisco, Oracle, Chase, L'Oreal, PayPal, excuse me, universities, institutions, etc., And she's kind of the person that people call on when they need a trusted consultant to help coach them when they have to do a high stakes presentation. So these are the people who are doing big keynote addresses or they're doing a TED talk or they're on a PBS program or they're even on Oprah's super soul sessions. Imagine that. Now, she herself is a creative artist and her films, her performances and theatre projects have received critical acclaim from publications like The Hollywood Reporter, The New York Times, Variety, Los Angeles Times, Good Morning America. And she has her own programs called Risk Forward and Rock the Room. Now, that's a little bit about her, but you're going to get to know and love her very, very much in just a moment when I share this interview. I love this interview so much, and that's why I've dedicated this episode to her. And so her publishers, the wonderful people at Hay House, um, say this about her book. They say that her book is one of the most unique books they've ever published at Hay House, and they publish a lot of books. And I've had a sneak peek at the advanced version of the book, and it's not only beautiful to look at, but it carries a really important message. To give you an idea of how it starts, this is from the first page. She says, some people in life know exactly what they want to achieve. This is a book for the rest of us, which is likely many of us. So let's now go to the interview. Hi, Victoria. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Content Sales Podcast. It's great to have you here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Well, you've been on the show before and I remember how popular that episode was and I'm sure our listeners are absolutely going to love what we're talking about here today. And what we're talking about today is this concept of risking forward. V, I want to just dive right in because you have written a book on this topic. Tell us what led you to write your book, Risk Forward. What led me to write the book is that as I went around the globe, really talking to different groups, working with executive teams, working with entrepreneurs of every type of background, small business owners, uh, people who are artists, I discovered that there was this unspoken pressure that people felt to always be clear and always have a plan and a goal, and that they felt held back when they weren't sure where they were going. And yet I discovered through working with all types of successful individuals and corporations and creative companies that a lot of the leaders didn't know always where they were going. So I wanted to address this topic, which is risking forward, which means heading out into the unknown, even if you're not 100% clear where things are going to go. So heading out into the unknown, even if you're not sure where things are going to go. That sounds very courageous. Why is this message so important right now? Well, I believe that This specifically right now, of course, with the pandemic, because we're in a period of transition as an entire, 
you know, planet, really. Uh, and so we're facing something we've never faced before. This is a huge opportunity for people to reevaluate their decisions, to reevaluate parts of their lives, and also to finally realize, you know, there's nothing quite certain. And this is a wonderful reason to go forward with what we most are excited about, to try things in our own way, because the time is now. I love that, trying things in our own way. And I think that's very relevant to our listeners. So, V, most, Victoria, most of our listeners are small business owners and they tune into this show to learn more about content marketing. And that involves putting themselves out there as experts, sharing their stories, sharing their client stories, taking their ideas and packaging them up and selling them and putting a value on them out there in the world. So I'm interested, how can Risking Forward help our listeners? What tips would you give them specifically around their marketing, their content marketing and Risking Forward? Absolutely. So as a small business owner, you're in a wonderful position because you are the captain of the ship. And so you can pivot and turn in the directions that you want to go. Uh, there's a lot of homogeneity out in the market of small business owners. And one of the things that Risk Forward helps people to do is to express their ideas in their own unique way. And that's a big marketing angle. It's a distinction factor for you to be different from other people, not because you're trying to be different, but because it's truly who you are. So for small business owners, there are all types of sections in the book. There's one of my favorites. It's called the prism effect, which is that in each of us is a full spectrum, if you will, of colors. And this is all about how do we take the angles, the ideas, the past, the passions that we have that are unique to us and put them forward in our business, whether it's in our web collateral, or the examples that we use, the stories that we tell to distinguish ourselves from everyone else. Could you talk a little bit more about this full spectrum? Because I think there's a really rich vein of inspiration people can get from this idea. Because when we're trying to come up with our ideas, when we're trying to come up with our content, when we're trying to put ourselves out there, people do look towards what everyone else is doing as a model. And then like you said, it ends up everybody's writing the same thing, putting out the same kind of blog, doing the same webinar. If I see the phrase, take your business to the next level, one more time, I'm going to stick a fork in my leg, you know? So tell tell us a bit more about this full spectrum. Like, how do I bring more of myself to my content and why is that important? Absolutely. So uh, there's an example in the book, and it's always great to teach through examples and stories. And so, Michelle and uh, Susie, you probably both know this one from having read the book and also from all your experience with me. But Ryan Levesque, who's a great marketer and someone who runs, right, the Ask Method, had uh, been running his business, you know, a little like others. And I'd said to him once we were talking, I said, what's an outside passion of yours that you have? And he said, well, I love Lego. And I said, great. What if you were to bring Lego into your business as a, a prop, as a gift, as an analogy? And at first he was hesitant because he thought, oh, it might not be taken seriously. But the truth is Lego lit him up. He knew a ton about Lego. And he took this risk. He risked forward to put himself out there and tie the two together. And he came up with an analogy that connects Lego to marketing. As you know, Michelle, he started using Lego in his stage sets. He started giving it away as gifts. And it became a real distinguishing feature for him. So he separated his brand from everyone else. And it was fun for him. It's fun for his clients. And it makes his material memorable. I love that. And I do remember that example. And in fact, uh, I think my partner PJ still has a little Lego figurine on his desk <laughs> that he got from a, an event he uh, attended with Ryan. And going back to what you were saying about homogenous, and I see this every day working uh, with women, is we want to stand out. We say we want to stand out. We say we want to differentiate, but we're not necessarily risking forward because that sounds kind of scary. What so when someone's not clear on their path of how they're going to uh, move forward, where would you recommend that they start? Yeah, well, I always say begin from within. This is a core phrase, the start of the book, where we want to first off embrace the fog. And what I mean by that is that, you know, recognizing the fog is not necessarily a bad thing. So we don't want to try to run out of it as quickly as we can, which is what most people do when they're not sure. They grab the easiest marketing idea or the easiest business model because they don't like not knowing and they feel embarrassed. So they 
clam on to something and 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 then they're kind of tied to it so the first thing is to take your time to embrace the fog as i say like if you're in a field and it's foggy the first thing you don't do is run you're going to hit a tree or a rock so you want to kind of be okay with not knowing and then begin from within say you know what would interest you what would be fun for you what would light you up how could you do it in a way that would be fun and if you start brainstorming with those questions you'll come up with some fairly unique ideas and then the step after that is to really start to try them out. I call it micro risk. So how can you try it out in a small way rather than redo everything like your whole website or you know, commit to a gigantic project? Say, let me do a, a small test run of this and see how it goes. I love that. And then you call that a micro risk. And yes. I love that because even in the term, it's like, well, you know, how bad could it be? <laughs> I'm just going to try, I'm just going to experiment for a little bit. And I love what right. you said about starting from within. Do you mind just telling me a little more about that? Yeah. Well, I believe that in each of us is what I call an inner current. Um, it is this, like a river, like uh, the current in an electrical wire. Uh, it's that force that moves through us, and I believe we each have that. Um, in the world of theater, it's called a through line, and it's something I've talked about for decades on stage, and it's the same idea here. It's this inner driving force within us. And I use the word current, inner current, because sometimes people think of it, oh, it's a theme or it's a topic or a goal, but a current has that sense of continuity. And so we want to reconnect with that. And there are ways to know we're on the inner current and ways to know we're off it. And we know we're on it when there's certain feelings that we have, like I'm curious or I'm excited, you know, or I'm feeling a little bit like nervous, but in a good way, right? I'm kind of like, ooh, you know, lit up. So those are signs. And there's a whole list of words in the book that we know we're on that inner current, that we know we're going in the right direction. We know we're off it when we're feeling like dread, you know, or we're feeling like a disinterested. And what happens in businesses, in small businesses, we feel forced to do what everyone else is doing. But maybe there's a better option for us. Like, oh, maybe you do the webinar in a different way, in a way that makes you excited. Like, what would be fun, right? And so we start from within. We pay attention to how something's feeling. That's one clue. I love that. And I do know myself, I feel when I'm on that current, you know, and I'm sure our listeners feel that too when we are doing work that lights us up when we feel we're bringing our full selves to our content or to our clients or to our meetings or to the way we're presenting ourselves to the world. So I love that. Um, so one thing, um, V, that you talk about in your new book, Risk Forward, is this idea of staying within the V. So you talk about full spectrum and yet there's also this idea of not going sort of too far outside your realm as well. It's kind of a balance. Do you mind speaking to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So in the book, and the book is highly, highly visual. It's highly designed. It's an experience. And so when you get to this section called the V, there's literally a V on the page. And I won't reveal the whole experience of what happens to that V, but there's sort of an animated effect. And the idea of the V is not actually based on my name, Victoria, although that's a nice, convenient <laughs> synergistic surprise. But it's really the idea that our vision, we think of a vision like a V, and we're at the point and the vision is going outwards. And this is a little different than the full spectrum concept, because the full spectrum concept is in each of us is a whole range. So in the case of Ryan, it was Lego, right? Uh, in the case of Michelle, you know, you love flowers and you bring that in and you have these wonderful analogies. And so it's like, how can you bring in who you are, your, your farm? So the V is different in that when we are Moving forward towards our vision, it's not always clear. That's the idea of risking forward. But it's clear within a, in a range. Like it's, it's, you know, if I am in my loft here, which is white with white walls, and someone comes in and goes, let's paint them purple, dark purple, I immediately know that's outside my V, my vision, right? But if someone says, why don't we, why don't we put a little gray trim around the edge? That, that might be closer, and the key is to know which ones are taking you off and which ones are keeping you on. And the way we go back to knowing which is within the vision is even if we're not visually clear, we can sense it, we can feel it. We're like, ooh, that sounds exciting. Or, oh, no, that makes me feel dread. I love using the emotions as the barometer. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's so good because I think that's what gets back to what you said, Susie, too, about we love the idea of being different, but we don't love the idea of risking, you know? And so this gives us a little bit of that barometer, a little bit of that sense of, okay, well, I can do those micro risks that V is talking about and just gradually bring a bit more of myself and pay attention to those emotions. So I love that. And V, you're talking about vision and you have some really interesting things to say about vision in the book and also about goal setting because obviously you know we often are taught we have a vision and then we set a bunch of goals to achieve that vision and I know for myself at times that's been a very helpful way to be and in fact we teach a lot of people about goal setting however two things can be true at the same time and there are some things about goal setting that I think you're bringing to the table that are really worth speaking about I'd love you to just share a little bit about your view of goal setting and risking forward. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm all for goals. I have many goals in my life. I have visions that I'm working towards. The challenge, I think, with goal setting is that it's taken as unequivocally a great thing, like especially in the business world, right? And people are like, got to have goals. You got to have goals. And so much so that people start to declare their goals before they're even sure they're the ones they want. And that's the issue I have with it. Because you see what I you know, refer to in the book as goal contagion, which is where people have <laughs> gotten each other's goals and adopted them as their own. It's like I have a program called Rock the Room where I teach people performance and presentation skills. And when I was doing VIP one-on-one -on -one coaching, people would come to me and they'd say, I want a TED Talk and a New York Times bestseller. And I would say, yeah, you and a thousand other people. Like, is that really your goal or did you just get that because that's what everyone else around you wants, right? Or in the entrepreneurial world, it's very popular these days, so it's fading to make these huge declarative statements like, I want to impact 100 million people by X date. And they're just pulling these random numbers out because it became kind of the fashion. It's like inappropriate to talk about money, so people talk about, quote, impact and like these big millions of numbers. But where did that come from? from. And so we hear these goals that other people have, or we set a goal, and we've all been there in our lives where we say, I want to make X amount of money, but we're miserable doing it. Because we're the goal is like the tail wagging the dog. And so really what this part of the book is about is that goal setting can lead us astray. We just have to be very careful with where we plant that flag and how we approach it. And as a last thing I would say on that topic, and I have lots more I could say because it's something I feel strongly about, is that if we each think back, and anyone listening, if you think back on some of the best experiences of your life, how many of those were the result of setting a goal? So as I say in the book, don't let your goals get in the way of your life. Ah, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It is so Very good. Financial talk. Any followers oh. we want on social media. So I think this is going to be a really part of the book for people to uh, explore. Earlier you mentioned captains of the ship. You talked about um, business owners being like captains of the ship. And as captains of the ship, we're not only setting goals, uh, and now we're going to have a new way to think about that, but also we're asked to be decisive. And usually that's a mark of a good leader is being able to say yes, no, this way, the other way. But in the book, Risk Forward, you say that decisiveness is actually overrated. Could you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's very similar to my take on goals in that like goals are taken as always a good thing. And here, as you've just heard me say, it's it can be problematic. And the same thing with decisiveness. You know, I, having worked with top leaders at companies like Starbucks, Microsoft, PayPal, having worked with entrepreneurs who are some of the biggest that we know and helping them in their presentations and strategy and how they think forward on their communication skills, I got the opportunity to be around these extraordinary business leaders. And what I discovered is that while on the surface they looked decisive, it was often after a lot of careful thought or a lot of careful experience. So the mistake that's sort of touted around in the, in the world is, you know, business leaders are decisive. They are, but it comes with great thought and care. And sometimes the decision comes quickly because they have the experience and the information so they can make a decision within a matter of minutes. But any great leader that I've talked to has often done their due diligence. They would be an irresponsible leader without it. So how, as I say in the book, how, how great is decisiveness if the result is a poor decision? 
right? And we've all done that where we've been forced to make a decision quickly because we want to look like we're clear and we're, you know, not weak. Right. And we say, yes, I'll do it. And then we're off for months or years on a project that doesn't really light us up. And that's an opportunity cost. That's a resources cost. That's a time cost. It's all kinds of things that come from that. So it's really about when and how you make a decision. Got it. Mm, I remember, I, I don't know who to attribute this to, um, but a quote that I heard very early on in my business life was, it's very easy to open a door, but it's very hard to close the door once you've walked into the room. And, you know, I think that's true. You open the door on something, this is going to be great, and not realising this is now six months of your life or this is now five years of your life or whatever it might be. And so you made a quick decision. Like I'm going to write a book? Like that decision? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know that's not, that's like a door you open and then you get inside and you go, OMG, what am I doing in here for a long time? Uh, and I yeah. know uh, the care you've taken, V, with your book. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a good, it's a good lead into a story of a client I uh, had in the risk forward experience. And you know, we have this experience in this community of amazing people. And she had come in and she had just started to put in motion a big project that had to do with taking care of a certain type of business owner. And it looked good from the outside and people were sort of encouraging her to do it. And so she was a little high on that kind of like, oh, everyone thinks it's a good idea. But as she realized through going through some of the book elements, it wasn't feeling great. It was feeling like a burden. It was feeling like something she dreaded. And she had the courage through the group to stop. And that courage to say no and not like, I'm going to charge forward mentality. She saved so much. And she said in retrospect, it probably saved her literally a million dollars. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. Her name's Renee Fink, and she just said the team costs, time costs, opportunity costs, it was a million dollar decision. But had she, you know, stayed with it, uh, it would have been problematic. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Powerful. It's that also that good. Permission. You know, for you gave yeah. her that permission, whereas she was wanting to stay consistent, which, you know, as leaders, we want to you know, keep our word and do our thing, but sometimes to our detriment, like you've just pointed out. Yeah. And, and part of that is just the, the illusion, go back to the initial question around decisiveness. It's the illusion that, oh, if I'm a good leader, I don't change my mind. But it's really how and when you do it. And if you come back to your team and you say, I've really thought about this and here's my reasoning, uh, they will respect you for that. Uh, we, we've had that with the launch of the book when I was doing the launch and Michelle, Michelle witnessed some of that and just, you know, when you really think through something, um, it's sometimes hard to change, but ultimately, if it's the right angle, uh, it all works out and I really, truly believe that. But I've seen a lot of unhappy business owners because they've just been marching to the tune of everyone else's drum mm. and uh, the beat of everyone else's drum and that's, that's a problem. Mm, right, we, we have that back to the captain of the ship. You have that opportunity to do it in your own way and to, and to try something new, right? If that's what you want to do, to have the courage to leave what you've done before and try something new. Thank you. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about Risk Forward. I think there's a lot of nuances in this Risk Forward book and the concepts um, that we need right now uh, in the world because we are gung-ho in a lot of the ways. We don't have permission to stop. We don't have permission to say I've changed my mind. Um, we don't have permission to say I don't know yet what I'm doing. I haven't got this all figured out. We're supposed to have everything figured out all the time. And so I love so much about what you are putting out into the world with this book. And right now, you know, we're coming into a full, you know, quite a long time of being in a pandemic situation. Uh, lots of people's lives have changed. Businesses have changed. We know there are people in our listener community who have had to completely pivot and transform their businesses. Some people are at, you know, high stress levels because shutdowns and all the different changes in the situation made life a bit unpredictable. How does risk forward help us in these times of great change and for people that are perhaps, you know, going through a period of great uncertainty right now? 
Yeah, well, as I like to say, I think we've always had uncertainty and what the pandemic has done is make it apparent because none of us has ever fully known if our health will be there or our loved ones will be there or our business will be there. The weather will not have some disastrous, unexpected change. So really what it's done is highlighted the constant uncertainty we've always had beneath our feet, if you will. And I think in that way, it's made us a little more aware and appreciative of of what what we do have and appreciative of the fragility of what's around us. So for that, I think for all of us to recognize, as I say in the book, is a lot of people are scared. You know, we have this illusion that everyone else has it together. But I'll tell you, again, having worked with some of the top people, and I say that only to prove that it happens at the top. You know, I've seen the CEOs of some of the biggest companies, the very well-known uh, personalities in the arts, have fear and keep going and honor that. And so I just want anyone who's hearing this who also has fear not to think that they're wrong for having that. And risking forward works in two ways. I mean, risking forward is going forward, be, taking those micro risks to try something. Uh, risking forward is, is asking for the right people to help you. Risking forward, as we said earlier, is also saying no, having the courage to say no. Because what you're risking forward to do is to, to head into an unknown. You have an opportunity, whether it's a marriage proposal or a business proposal or anything in between, and you're thinking, that's not quite right. So I'm going to risk forward and really face the unknown because I have nothing specific yet in its place. We've seen a lot of women in our community have to change their idea about what business looked like and how they operated going from offline businesses to online businesses, you know, face-to-face -face businesses to having to figure out the whole all, you know, digital space. Uh, and that has been very confronting on top of closures and lockdowns. And we've certainly seen a lot of that in Australia. Um, one of the things that is very common is that and something Michelle and I go on about is women being really specific about who they're for and who their ideal client is for. And I wanted to ask if there was going back to what you were saying about homogenous, is there Anything that you would say to those women who are really broad in their focus, but they really want to have a more specialized focus, what from the risk forward message could they take that allows them to not feel like they're leaving the money on the table, but in fact, that they are actually doing something that's better for their business and their future? And you mean that by sort of niching down? Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it, uh, this is a subject very close to my heart because I think sometimes, and this, this may be a surprise for some, but I think sometimes we're surprised by who our audience is. So that's the first thing I would say is sometimes we think it's a certain person and actually our message starts to resonate in a way we couldn't have anticipated. I'm a very good example of that. When I started speaking and I come from a background in the arts and I was a comedian and a painter and a dancer and a mover and a writer and a solo performer. And when I started doing keynotes, very early on, the agents who booked me said, well, who's your target audience? And I said, well, I can tell you who it's not. You know, I'm sure it's, it's not going to be like the tech companies and the insurance companies and the financial companies. Well, guess what? They became my biggest client. Because <laughs> it was so different. It was so different. And I started to use analogies from the arts to teach sales. I started to use analogies from, you know, mind to teach, you know, insurance and focus and, and it, just that disparate nature. So that's the first thing I would say. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure to, quote, pick your lane. And what I like to say is sometimes the lane picks you, you know. And I, so it's really initially about putting it out there and seeing who loves this message. Who needs this message? I mean, my book's another good example. Uh, I really thought in the beginning it was mostly going to resonate with women between 35 and you know 60 who are small business owners. And lo and behold, college kids are loving it. Kids who are in their teens and 20s are loving it. People in their 80s, men who are nine-figure business owners are loving it. So we often don't know. So that's the first thing I would say is, is see really, before you limit yourself, see Who's out there? Because even if you're niched down in one way, because this is a niched down book in the sense it's specifically about not knowing, it has a broader audience than I would have thought. So it's kind of like that hourglass. You go through this tiny edge and then it kind of broadens out to someone you couldn't have imagined. Love it. Thank you so much. Mm. 
It reminds me of something that another one of our guests, um, Shelley Brander, said about the narrower you go and the deeper into that narrow niche you go, the more expansive it actually becomes. And uh, you really made me think of that then, V. Um, tell me, is there anything you'd like to say to people before we wrap up? What, If you could leave one parting message with our listeners, Victoria, what would that be? Well, it would be two things. It would be the opening line of the book and then a line shortly after. So it is this. Some people in life know exactly what they want to achieve. This is a book for the rest of us. And then secondarily, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> At the edge of not knowing is the beginning of the extraordinary. Mm, there's an inspirational message. Mm, writing that one down. <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much I'm so excited to see um because uh, I know our community loved your message as I said last time you were on the show and so excited to share the book with them um and so grateful that you're here on the show with us thank you thank you thank you and for anyone who's looking for it if you go to riskforward.com forward slash book, you can find us. So just riskforward.com forward slash book. Or if you're completely lost, riskforward.com, you'll figure out your way. <laughs> <laughs> and you've really risked forward with this book. I mean, it is not a usual book. It's highly visual. It is not the kind of book that people might be expecting. It's uh, absolutely a work of art. It's beautiful. It's beautifully printed. Yeah, people who have gotten an early access to the hardcover are just so pleased with it. They go, I'm going to keep this by my bed. I'm going to put it on my you know, shelf, on my special, special shelf. So yeah, it's, it's, it was created to be everyone's book, a real journal of a book. It's the kind of book that doesn't have a lot of other quotes on the back from other people endorsing it. So it feels like your book. It's, it's written to be the reader's book. Mm, beautiful. And it is. I'm, I'm really excited to see what our readers think of the book and highly encourage them to go and grab it at riskforward.com forward slash book. book. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Victoria. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you for having me, Susie and Michelle. I enjoyed that conversation so much and I hope you did too because if you've ever felt that pressure to conform to what everyone else is doing, especially in your marketing, which is what Michelle and I mostly dug into with um, when we talked to Victoria, then maybe you can just cut yourself some slack and really think about doing things your way in your lane, at your speed, using your wonderful experience and putting more of you into your marketing and into your business. I also loved what Victoria had to say about feeling like we always have to have quick solutions and to be really decisive as business owners. And I liked her idea, as uncomfortable as it might sound, of embracing the fog of not knowing and actually using that fog as the starting point for creating a business that you love. I really loved that suggestion. So much goodness in this episode episode and so much more goodness inside of the book, Risk Forward, which I hope you will quickly get a copy of. I will put a link inside of our show notes of where you can get the book because it's very, very new as we um, go to air with this episode. Um, our show notes are going to be over at herbusiness.com forward slash 173, but you'll find it at all the good online sellers. Um, but I'll give you the details because you might also want to be in touch with Victoria to subscribe to her newsletter and check out her courses as well. Now, if you want to go ahead and grab the book right now, the best place to do that um, at the point of recording is riskforward.com forward slash book. That's riskforward.com forward slash forward slash book. And Victoria's actually got a bunch of great gifts that she's offering readers um, who show proof of purchase of the book. So you definitely want to check that out. Now I want to say thank you to one of our listeners. And this review comes from a brand new member of the Her Business Network. We just recently opened the doors to the network and we had a so many fabulous new members. And one of them is Renanda Rich of The Ink Rat. Isn't that a great business name? So she's a ghostwriter, copywriter, and she's an editor based in Sydney. And she has over 25 years experience providing services to entrepreneurs in wellness, self-development, technology, and sustainability-focused industries. I love a specialized 
copywriter. So you can find out more about her at theinkrat.com. But what she said was that she had been listening to episode 166 of the Her Business podcast about taking small steps. And she said she was cooking, etc. <laughs> while she was listening. And she said, it helped me to see I only need to do a little bit each day to make big progress overall. And that is absolutely true, Renanda. And thank you so much for your wonderful review and for being a listener of this show. Now, if you leave a review on Apple Podcasts, I want you to be sure to tell me what your business name is so that I can give you a shout out too. And if you enjoyed this episode of Her Business, I would really appreciate it if you would tell a friend and be sure to subscribe so that you catch the next episode. We have some really great topics coming up. Now, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know how Victoria's message resonated with you. What actions will you take as a result of listening today? You can reach me by emailing podcast at herbusiness.com. I respond to every message and I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Join me next time on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now. Hey there. If you like what you heard today and you have a little more focus and a little more clarity on your next steps, then you really want to check out the Her Business Network. It's an amazing place to get the support and advice to grow your business. And you get to do that with a community of like-minded women who are also growing and scaling a business. I am so committed to helping our members get results. That's why we give you the accountability, the training and the support to create a business and life that works for you so that you can finally have that type of business that gives you the income and the impact and the results that you want. Inside the Her Business Network, you'll find like-minded women, new clients, referrers, suppliers, collaborators, and friends. Because as business owners, we don't have to do this alone. If this sounds good to you, then head on over to herbusinessnetwork.com and get on the wait list to join us when the doors next open up. I hope to see you there.